This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have talked through all angles of Super Bowl 58 from sides, totals, player props, same game parlays, everything. And now it's time to just sit back and watch the game. But while doing so, we can still bet on Super Bowl 58 at FanDuel Sportsbook via live betting. And we haven't discussed that a lot here on the show. We are going to amend that today by talking to Ed Miller. He is a co-author of two of my favorite sports betting books I've ever read. We're going to talk through uh, live betting models, things that he has built himself, and try to get some insights on what the inputs are for live betting models, where their inefficiency lies, and how we can potentially try to find some edges while live betting, both Super Bowl 58, but also just broadly in live betting markets. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Ed Miller. You can find him on Twitter at Ed Miller Poker. He is a co-author of Interception, uh, The Secrets of Modern Sports Betting, and of course, The Logic of Sports Betting 2 with Matthew Davidow. He's a guy who has built out his own live betting models. So Ed, it is a pleasure to have you on the show for today. How are you doing? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We had Ed on a couple of years ago on covering the spread, talking through the logic of sports betting, and it was fun to get the insights kind of on his thoughts on the industry and stuff like that. And of course, Interception came out this fall. Uh, finally got to read all the way through it, find some time during football season to uh, get through that. And it was a delight. So we'll talk to Ed about what went into that book, um, building out live models, where you can find inefficiencies and much more throughout the show for today. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We had four shows up previously throughout this week, talking same game parlays, talking player props, sides and totals with Dr. Ed Fang, and much more. You can find all that right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed and, of course, on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. I podcast or spotify or leave us a thumbs up over on youtube as well happy super bowl to all who celebrate from fanduel america's number one sports book fanduel has so many ways for you to end the season with a w or two or three not only can you bet on who will win super bowl 58 but fanduel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown how many points will be scored and so much more new customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y in New York. Now, Ed, we're going to talk about live betting for the most part for today, but I feel like you'd be negligent on my part not to ask you. Any thoughts for you on the pregame markets here for 49ers versus the Chiefs? FanDuel Sportsbook has the Niners at two and a half, total at 47 and a half right now. I have none. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, in general, you know, these are extremely liquid markets. There's tons of smart people in it, and, you know, I don't. I don't think uh, I could work very, 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 very hard and maybe find a, a very small edge that I probably could easily be wrong about. So I don't know. Now, it's not my thing. With you right now, are you primarily betting live? Is that kind of where you live as far as your actual like betting allocation? Well, I'm not. I, I so I'm not betting exactly. I've been on the industry side. We were um, right. built a company that uh, created odds feed. For uh, for operators, basically, we we uh, supplied sports books like FanDuel, not FanDuel, but uh, you know other sports books, 
um, with with live odds, you know, yeah. for, you know, uh, during the game, props, all that kind of stuff. So that's why I wanted to have you on for today is because your book, Interception, focuses a lot on live betting models. And because you built those out, you know what goes into a live betting model and you know some of the deficiencies as well, because I'm sure you've had frustrations along the way, several, uh, while building out these live betting models. So for people who don't know, what are the inputs for live betting models? And yeah, those so lead to, to bad lines during games. Yeah, let me just outline the problem real quick from the sportsbook side, right? Like if you're a betting customer, you may not even think about it. But, you know, after every play in the Super Bowl, for instance, you're going to get a new betting line, right? That line has to come from somewhere. <laughs> well, where does it come from? It comes from a computer program, basically like uh, the one I wrote or, you know, something similar. So so that's what we're talking about when we say a live betting model. It's really just a, a, a program or an algorithm that calculates a line. And, and, and it's important to say this because this is a big distinction. Remember, you asked, do I have an opinion on the pregame betting line? Well, that's not an algorithm. Yep. What that is, is that is a market, a liquid market where people are buying and selling. So if it if the price were minus three and a half, people would buy. If the price were minus, you know, were, were pick them, people would sell. Right? Does that make sense? So whereas live, that there's really no time for that process to happen. Every place, there's just too much information in the actual stuff that's happening on the field in any given second um, to allow that model, that that market kind of model to to even up. So. They rely on people like me to build computer programs to calculate lines. Um, so the question is, you know, what what goes into that? Well, the 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 there's several different ways to build these. Um, I, I would say they're on a spectrum. Kind of the two ends of the spectrum are like. I would call it math equations, where if you looked at the code, you wouldn't even necessarily know it, there was a football game involved. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like Poisson distributions and beta distributions and say right. And then the other end of the spectrum is you can simulate the game. You can, you know, basically try to faithfully recreate a football game and um, do it, you know, 100,000 times. And then however many times the Chiefs win in your simulation, that's your betting line, right? So those are kind of the two ends of the spectrum. And I would say most models that exist in them. And there's like, when I say models, there's, I don't know, a handful, half a dozen that are in them you know, marketplace at any given time, FanDuel will have their own football model. You know, some of the other companies will have their own. There's third party companies like the one we founded that have supply them. So I don't know, there's maybe six of them that are roughly in use um, in in the space. Um, and yeah, they're going to lie on a spectrum between those two extremes of, of exactly how they work. Um, the main idea, though, is you want to tell the model what the pregame line was <laughs> one way or another, right? So the model will either directly take in, you know, minus two and a half, you know, whatever the total is as an input, or it'll take some proxy for that. But but it's, it's going to have some input that basically pegs that model to the pregame line because the people running the model trust that the market is smart, <laughs> just like I do. So um, yeah, so that's how it works. And then it's the model's job as things happen in the game to figure out mathematically, okay, well, if this was a two and a half game before it started, but now, you know, the 49ers just scored a touchdown on the first drive. Now, what is it, right? That's the question the model is supposed to answer. And the problem is that situation occurs a lot where a team is favored by two and a half. They score a touchdown. They're seven, nothing. A model is going to know and have a large sample to draw upon what the expectations are going forward from that kind of thing. So in that sense, a model's probably going to be pretty efficient because like you said, the market is efficient. There's a lot of money in these markets. So they're going to have good numbers going in and they're going to have a good idea of what to expect when Team X that's favored by two and a half is up seven nothing early on. Where right. do the models steer off course what can give them issues because i know like you said you've built out live betting models what are the hardest things for you when you're building out that model to try to encapsulate within a game so so first of all there's the obvious right there's like the quarterback gets injured you know yeah. big major you know sort of unexpected events um in 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 this is less so in the nfl in college football the the pregame market even in the bigger games the, the pregame markets are not very efficient and the teams they're, they're, the, the the offenses and defenses are much more different yeah and so 
just seeing how they're matching up against one another in the game. How is this, you know, you know, option offense working against this defense? Actually, you know, you can guess how it's going to work based on whatever before the game, but then you actually see the two teams on the field. You see, oh man, that guy is a, a huge matchup problem for this guy, right? right so right. so it's less true in the NFL. These guys are all amazing. They, they all play off, you know, the teams are better known. So that's less of a thing in the NFL. But the, the thing that's always true is, um, so obviously there's just unexpected events. Um, the other thing is that um, football is just complicated, especially because it, it's it's like... It's not a continuous thing, right? Like they they have specific amounts of time on the clock. They're going to make specific decisions. Like for instance, here's an easy one, right? Totals. Totals are a nightmare. Why are totals a nightmare? It's because the teams have two choices. It's fourth down. You have two choices. Choice one is punt. That goes under. Right. <laughs> choice two is go for it. That goes over. Right. right? No matter what, right? So, like, if they choose to go for it, that's an overplay. And if they choose to punt, that's an underplay, right? And so, as a model builder, like, it's my job, one way or, again, one way or another, whether I'm building a math model or, or one of these simulation models, I, I have to account for th- that sort of decision making, right? I mean... You've watched football. <laughs> You're like, why is he going for it here? I mean, you know, it's it's impossible to really predict, right? So, right. um, and and as I say, this is not a subtle effect on the total. This is a huge effect right. on the total, right? So, all that stuff is extremely hard to model. And you know, as the game goes on, you know, it's just that that pregame market becomes less and less useful. It basically, you could just think of it as a you know, the Chiefs are about this good and the 49ers are about this good, right? right? That's what the pregame line tells you. Well, the further you get in the game, okay, I know that, but like right. now the actual things that are happening in the game matter more. And it, it, one thing you focused on a lot in the book is coaching tendencies. And like last, we two weeks ago, we saw Kyle Shanahan, who's pretty conservative against Dan Campbell, who's a madman. And so I feel like being aware of those coaching tendencies is important for us for as live betters kind of knowing right. will this coach be aggressive or not but that's something that like maybe you can but i i feel like it'd be very difficult to incorporate a coach's aggressiveness into a live betting model because it's just like it's not realistic for you to kind of have those inputs across however many nfl games there are in a season i mean it's it yeah exactly i mean so so i would say so i said there's you know roughly six ish models in the market you know and some of them are going to account for that pretty well. Some of them are probably going to completely punt on that problem. Yeah. You know, they might not even be aware they're punting on the problem. Again, some of these models are math models. They don't even look like a football game necessarily. Yeah. If you look at the code, the people that write them are mathematicians. So the way that it, it, it's hard as a football watcher and fan and better, it's hard to get in the mind of some of the people that build the models, you know, but really some of them are, pretty math oriented and so they're not even necessarily thinking like that they're just thinking like how do i draw a distribution against this other distribution they're just you know abstracting out the football part and thinking about numbers and yeah exactly it's it's impossible to nail that yeah um if you're not dialed in on the football because it changes over time that's the other thing right all this stuff changes you know next year's gonna be right like (laughs) they're all gonna make different decisions next year right? right so you can't you can't you, you can't use past data like that the way the way it's tempting to if you don't you know think about the stuff exactly and that, yeah. that's a tough thing other thing you focused on in the book was the value there that can be had in weird scenarios where the sample size models are drawing upon is smaller like if the game script gets out of hand in a hurry that could potentially be a situation where the live model has trouble encapsulating because the sample size it's drawing upon is smaller so do you feel like better should be more inclined to check out live betting markets in where things get off the rails because there are more difficulties in modeling out those kind of edge case scenarios. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if the game is going according to script, right. right. Then what does that mean? Well, no matter how the model's built, it's going to be more comfortable in that space, right? Right. There's going to be, whether it's a math model, the distributions are, you're going to be in the middle part of the distribution. If it's a simulation model, it's going to be built on, uh, looking at 
just more instances of games that have gone like that in the past, right? right? So no matter no matter what way, but yeah, if that team gets out to you know twenty one nothing lead or something, um, and now coaches start thinking about making weird decisions, somebody's onside kicking, you know, whatever, right? Like, yeah, that's where all these models. I mean, the model itself is could easily get lost in a spot like that easily, very right. easily, right? You know. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's a difficult thing to model. So if things do get out of hand, that's where you could potentially find some more. Yeah, you uh, just it, I I would just pay more attention. You yeah, know, exactly. if it, if the game starts going like that, you say, okay, this is this is this is going to be harder right. for. And this is and 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 you know, I know this is Fanduel, and and just to be clear, I think Fanduel does a great job on this. From you know, just <laughs> just a, as a you know a professional respect perspective, I think they the the people at Fanduel who who build this these models and stuff. Um, do a, a, a particularly good job. Um, but yeah, I'm just, you know, that's the time to say, hey, maybe the right. folks at FanDuel didn't think of this one, exactly. you know, yeah. maybe, maybe they're, you know, flying blind and just, yeah, take a look at those markets. Does, does this number make sense? You know, you know, and, and whereas, whereas that thought process of does this number make sense? I kind of caution against that in the book because um, sometimes your intuition is bad, right? So right. like, you know, yeah, if they if the team that's favored runs down the field and scores a touchdown, and you're like, is that the right line? Yes, that's the right line. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, it is. But if the some team goes up four touchdowns, and you're like, is that the right? Line? You you're you're in much you know stronger ground to be like, I don't know if that's the right line. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the Super Bowl specifically, because one thing you discuss a lot in the book is how models are running for like for college basketball. You've got 15 games going at a single yep. time. And you can't have oversight in all those games. You can't have eyes on those games as a trader. But this is a Super Bowl. Most right. most sports are clearing out the paint, letting this one have an ISO ball for the entire time. And with so much money being in there, there are more eyes in those markets. So should we be changing our process when it's an event like the Super Bowl, where we know traders are going to have their eyes to the best extent they can on these live markets? Right. So, so that's an excellent question. Um, and here's kind of what I would say about that. So, so again, the, there's a model, right, with the, which is the math. But then there's a trader who's an employee at the sports book who's basically a go-between between the math model and then what, what betting odds actually get posted. So on a college basketball Saturday where there's a million games, that go-between is just going to be like rubber stamp. Yep, yep, good line, good line, whatever, you know. And nobody's betting it, so it's fine, right, right. for the most part. Um Super Bowl is obviously the polar opposite of that. So yeah, for sure, there's going to be traders watching these lines. The problem is, from a trader perspective, is that the math is still going to be a little bit of a black box for that trader, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a trader, I work at a sports book. All right, the model says X. I don't necessarily understand why the model says X. Right. I didn't build the model. I sure, certainly didn't build the model. I don't, I don't know of any place where the people who are actively trading the games are one and the same as the people who built them all. So, um, so they, it's very likely that person is not going to have insight into exactly how that model works, exactly how it came up with that number. So they might decide they don't like the number, move it. Um, they might move it based on action, right? So that's the other thing. That's the thing that will happen. There's a little bit more of a market in right. the Super Bowl for this right. stuff than there would be during a normal game, right? During a normal game, there's essentially no market behavior. There's, you know, people bet it and then boom, lines down and now a new line gets calculated. Right. It's very little market, you know, bet, the weight of betting type input. In the Super Bowl, obviously, could be a little more. But that then begs the question, do the traders understand what that betting action means, right? Because, again, if I'm a, let's say I'm a trader, I got a black box, right? Here's what I can look at. I can look at what my black box is telling me. I can look at what other operators have posted, Right. I can watch the game and I can see the bets that are coming in. Yeah. Those are my four bits of information, right? And I have to use my brain <laughs> to kind of figure out, okay, everybody wants to bet on the Chiefs at this moment. Why? Mm -hmm. Why are they all betting on the Chiefs? Is it because it's a good bet? Is it because they just showed Taylor Swift on TV? <laughs> is it, you know, is it because some other sports book has a, has a line that's, three percent off of where i'm at is it because some sports book i don't even it's not even on my screen that i don't see is offering something i don't you know see is it 
because my model sucks? Is it because, <laughs> I mean, you don't know. Right. And you don't have a lot of time to figure it out in the moment. Not not for any single line. If it starts to accumulate over time, right? Like if everyone's betting the Chiefs the entire second quarter, well, now you've got some time to think, okay, what the heck's going on here? Right. Why is everyone on the Chiefs? You know, what do I need to do about that? You know, right. but as a one-off, it's just, it's a very difficult problem for traders. So yeah, there's going to be people trying to do that, but it's hard. The other thing is that that the books try to have a lot of lines up. I mean, yeah. so far we're basically only talking about the the big line, right? right? The point spread or the money line, right? I mean, a lot of these books have props up. Yeah. You know, next touchdown scorer. Right. And with a list of 20 people. I mean, you keep track of that. <laughs> You're trying to figure out on That's the fly. Who, I'm good. I'm good. Who I'm the, who the next I'm touchdown score? Okay, the Chiefs had the ball on the 43-yard line. Who's the right. next touchdown score? Oops, they just got a first down. Now right. with the – I mean, come now on. Now it's a pick six. Sweet. Right? I you mean, know? exactly. It's just, you know, it's, it's so – hard in the yeah. moment to keep track of all this stuff and do, you just have to i mean so for the main stuff yes there's going to be traders with eyes on it for the littler stuff i mean it's just i mean best of luck to the operators offering that stuff if they want to do a good job so let's talk about those props because yep. most books do now have uh, live player props available and for yep. me personally i have enjoyed these markets more because of latency issues um when the chiefs have the ball mark andrews is not in the field so I have more ability to bet into Mark Andrews markets without worrying that I'm going to, because my TV feed is behind uh, what the, the, the odds feed is, I'm not worried about missing something. You know, it, it'll still impact. What the Chiefs do on offense will impact Mark Andrews live markets, but not to the same extent it'll impact results of this drive and stuff like that. And we've got wardrobe malfunctions to the Super Bowl, so I'm assuming latency issues are not going to get a whole lot better for this weekend than what they would be. So... For me personally, live player props are my preferred way to bet live. So when you're watching games, injuries are the big thing, obviously. You know, we know that, that injuries will influence live markets. But what other things do you think can influence us in trying to decide whether a live player prop is a good bet or not? Well, again, this is a football game. Mm -hmm. And football is played in discrete blocks. One team has the ball. They have a drive. Like you said, Mark Andrews is not on the field. Not only is not on Mark Andrews not on the field now, he will not be on the field until the Ravens get the ball back. Right. right. So um so how does the sports book that has to be in the line. Yeah. So in any line about a Mark Andrews prop, right, there is an assumption about essentially how many plays from scrimmage the Ravens are gonna run from here to the rest of the game. Okay. That's a hard assumption to make. Football's weird, <laughs> you know, and and it's I mean, at the very first play of the game, it's easy because you use the pregame market, right? Now it's the third quarter, right? Teams up two touchdowns, right? Ravens are up two touchdowns. You know, Chiefs are driving. You know, what's that, Mark Andrews? <laughs> I'm supposed to be. You tell me. I don't right. know. Right. right? The Ravens are going to get the ball back. What are, are they? Are just are they just going to run it? What are they going to do? Are does the model know they're just going to run it? Probably not. Right. <laughs> Probably right. doesn't nail it for sure. Right. You know, it's just hard to nail all that stuff. You know, and so if you just think about it in those terms, just break it down. Especially, yeah, we get into the second half. We get to the. They're going to pull some of that stuff down in the fourth quarter. They're not going to let you bet yeah. that with three minutes left. But you know, yeah, it's the third quarter. You know, you say, okay, how many drives are left here? The Chiefs have the ball. Okay, something's going to happen on this drive. They're either going to score or not. Then the, the Ravens get the ball back. Okay, it's going to be, the clock's going to be about four minutes. You know, okay, they're going to have a drive there. They're going to three and out. They're going to try to run the ball, or maybe they're not. Okay, now then the Chiefs are going to get the ball back. What's going to happen? And you kind of do the math, you know, and, and again, this sounds like a lot of logic to do in your head during a game, and it will be if this is your first time doing it, but, you know, if you if you make a habit of this, if you right. decide you want to get good at this, right. you know, and practice, this is you get used to how football works, right, and how right. this stuff works. And um, yeah, and and you're gonna find. I mean, if you do that well, you're gonna find a lot of these props. The in game props are just absurdly priced. <laughs> I'm right. just gonna be honest, because it's because because it's a math equation making the number, and there's 
complicated assumptions that go into that number that it's impossible to make the number without also making the complicated assumptions. And, you know, I mean, it's just who's made there's 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 often the honest answer is there's often no person on the other end of that math equation right. who's actively trying to do that. So okay. And I think that with the live player props, it's especially pertinent with guys who have volatile roles. Like I went to Mark Andrews because entering the conference championship, we didn't really know what his role would be. He's coming off this pretty serious injury. He didn't play the first three snaps of the game. So like those are situations too, that a math equation like you're talking about is going to have a hard time knowing unless they're like filtering in next gen stats feeds to know that Mark Andrews is playing, which I'm guessing. Is also, you get updates on the first drive. Right. You watch the first drive. You now have new information. Exactly. Is the person running the odds feed paying attention to that? Did they right. see the same thing? Right. Often the answer is no. And like that was my issue previously is I was like, because I have like, I have my own betting models, but they're all for pregame or pre right. for me for a lot of NASCAR. You and everyone else. This right. is this is the state of the market. Right. Everyone has pregame stuff. Right. And it gets, for good reason, I understand why it's this way. Right. But yeah, there's there's not that, that's the other thing. There's not a lot of live stuff out there. Yeah. There just isn't like as as far as like on the modeling side, right. on the better modeling right. side, like there's no, it's not like the you know go to livebettingmodel.com dot right. and you know <laughs> and then get up to the minute you know nerd modeling is right. not a thing, right? I mean, right. It, I right. will it be a thing probably, sure. yeah. <laughs> but it's not right now. The, the the issue I had is I was always like it was like paralysis because I was like I know that this was a good bet before like I can tell myself it was a good bet before the game but I would always be like paranoid during the game of whether or not it's a good bet but I think that reading your book kind of you know allows you to realize the inefficiencies of some of these markets and feel more at ease and feel more like okay I, maybe I actually do have an edge here even though I can't mathematically prove right. that I have it. You never know it. Right. You never know. That's the right. that's the thing about sports betting that it, that is it is nerve-wracking, right. right? Because you know in other games, you know in poker, I mean right. I my background, my original yeah. game, I mean it's cards. Right. I know if I get my money all in with aces, it's a good bet. I just right. know it, right? <laughs> you, you literally never know in sports. Yeah. Like you never know when you when you pull that trigger, and, and you're like, man, I'm sure this is a good. But you could be wrong. Wrong a lot. But, you know. But the thing is, they can also be exactly. wrong, and they can also be very wrong. Right. So it's it's you just have to embrace that you know kind of uncertainty of it, and just say, you know, we're 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 in the fog of war here, and we're right. we're gonna just do our best, you know finally getting to that point which has been uh comforting for me throughout these playoffs now the other yeah. thing you talk about a lot during interception is the inefficiencies of same game parlays because it's the same thing where it's relying on a model and you get some to some edge cases and you can get a lot of flukiness so you talked about the value parlays as well in the logic of sports betting we talked to you about like parlaying um kbo markets when the weather is you know a certain a certain right. way and stuff like that and you talked about the value parlays, and I think that's especially pertinent when it comes to heavily correlated markets where the books are trying to account for that correlation, but are they doing so properly? So what are the advantages of same game parlays that may go overlooked through your eyes? All right. So same game parlay from the sports, again, from the sports books perspective is a devilishly hard problem. If you want to offer any kind of menu like the modern, modern menus, right? It, particularly if you want to offer any player-based bets at all, it becomes extremely hard because you have to correlate correctly player usage with game state, with game situation. So all of a sudden you have a situation where you have to know if the Chiefs go up three touchdowns, this guy is going to get more usage or this guy is going to get less usage. You have to get that right, right? This happens in basketball. It's a big deal in basketball. A big deal. Um so that's the first thing. You have to nail all that because the, you can pick all that. If you get that wrong, you better can pick that apart by choosing those as the options. They pick Chiefs win the first half by 21 plus points, which is, you know, gets obviously huge plus money. But, you know, now as the moment you click that into your parlay leg, you're now, you don't care about any of the run outs of the game where that doesn't happen. Right. That's the no longer matters you only care so it's it's on one hand you can think oh this is long odds i'm probably gonna lose yeah you're probably gonna lose yeah. <laughs> it's fine don't think of it in those terms that's not how to think of it to think of it is okay they have a model they have this entire universe of possible events 
that they have to basically model correctly. I want to find the parts of that universe that they screw up, right? And so, yeah, you say, okay, well, what happens if, you know, the Chiefs go up by 21 points in the first half, and then what's going to happen to this player's, you know, touchdown rate in that situation? Okay, or what's going to happen to this player's yardage or, or this player's carries or something, you know, and it could be maybe it's a second string running back who all of a sudden is going to get, you know, 11 carries in that right. situation right, or something like that. Right. So so um, whatever it is, you just think it through. Right. You say, OK, what happens? What about if this happens? In the game? And you could just play around with it. You just say, what 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 if what if the uh, what if they score? No points at the first half. You know what? It's not. That's not as interesting a, a, a one. But like, you know, but you could just ask all those. Like, what if this happens? Click that in. That's right. now a parlay leg. Okay. Then what? Right. And look at all the options and right. say, okay, can I bet? I can now bet this guy over anytime this is twenty. Yes, please. Right. Yes. You know, and um. Yeah, so that's how, that's how I would look at it. It's it's you know it, again, it's the player props that really make the single game parlays extremely hard to price because if it's limited to only game props, you know, yeah, I can kind of get it right. You know, if the if the Chiefs win the first half by twenty one points, you know, what are the total right yards of the other team in the second? I, you can kind of come up with a reasonable answer for that, right. um, but I mean, when you drill down to the in, individual player level, it's just you know, forget it. <laughs> well, I think it's just like such an advantage for us to realize that when we plug a leg into a parlay, we're assuming that that plays out. And it's, that's an input for us. Like yes. saying, okay, uh, the game goes over, or let's say the, the Niners win, let's do an alt market Niners minus five. That means the chiefs are dropping back more often. Patrick Mahomes may scramble more often. So you right. can say, what are the things that occur? If I assume yep. this leg automatically yep. hits and that's yep. just like more data for us to have. And I feel like thinking about it as that bet is guaranteed to hit. It's not guaranteed to hit, but like in the event, this parlay pays out, that event is guaranteed to hit. What else is more likely to occur? If I assume that happens. This yeah, this kind of thinking is is extremely effective for picking a bar a part same game parlays for really in all the sports honestly right. now. I mean I, right. I had somebody email me. I, we have an example in interception that I just kind of I haven't messed with hockey same game parlays. <laughs> I just was like, you know, using my brain and I said, here's a here's a if someone decides to offer hockey parlays where you can bet on, you know, players to score goals and and get assists. Well, you could pair up people on the same line and, you know, possibly take them. And sure enough, someone emailed me and said, I, I read that in your book. I thought about it. I looked for it. And I've been <laughs> killing it. <now." laughs> well, the hockey same game parlay. I mean, I didn't right. even know that was a thing. I was just like, it's it's going to be, if it's not a thing now, it's going to be a thing. Someone's going to decide right. they want to put up player-based hockey parlays. And, and then that's the problem that person's going to have to solve. And it's hard to solve. So here it is, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's there in all the sports. Right. And there's value in, they want to get the markets up. They want to offer these, all these markets out, offer a wide menu and not everything's going to be perfect right away. It'll never be perfect as you said, but it'll be less perfect at the right. time. So trying to find things that may be more in their infancy stage, like live, uh, live player props, like same game parlays, you're more likely to find an edge there than right. you may, than you may somewhere else. That is Ed Miller. I have a link to Interception, The Secrets of Modern Sports Betting in the show notes over on FanDuel Research. If you want to check that out, I'd highly recommend it, along with The Logic of Sports Betting with him and Matthew Davidow. Two awesome books if you're new to betting or if you're a seasoned veteran, too. Both integral parts for your process. Ed, I appreciate the time. Enjoy the Super Bowl, and hopefully we'll talk to you again here soon. Thank you so much. It's always a lot of fun to talk about this stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, awesome. check out Ed on Twitter at Ed Miller Poker. And we have the link to that book again over on FanDuel Research as well. True delight uh, to get to talk to him and pick his brain about live betting, something we have not discussed enough, I don't think, on this podcast overall. That's all we got here for today and this week here on Covering the Spread. Big thank you to all of our guests for joining us throughout this time. Uh, talk, giving their insights on Super Bowl 58. Find all those shows on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and FanDuel.com and uh, the FanDuel Podcast Network, FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonis and check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Enjoy the Super Bowl. We'll talk to you all once again next week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 